They're not good. Skin tightening beauty tools, what are they really doing? How good are they and which one would be right for you? You guys know I have a lot of beauty tools and devices. I mean, that's basically all I focus on and I love buying them and using them and seeing what I can do to improve my skin at home. But I thought it was really important to go over all of these devices so that you understand what is the difference between a microneedling pen and a high frequency wand? Or how does an IPL device differ from a radio frequency device? Or how do skin lasers work? I see these questions all the time, so if you have them, you are in the right place. I will go over the exact devices that I would purchase again. Stay tuned. So we're just gonna go through it all. We're gonna go through every skincare device concept I have and compare and contrast them to figure out what is right for you. We're gonna be going over microneedling, microdermabrasion, lasers, radio frequency, HIFU, IPL, high frequency microcurrent, and LED light devices. I'm gonna go into detail as best I can based on personal use, experience, and research so that we can figure out what is the right device Advice for you and your skin and your skincare goals because the last thing I ever want you doing is wasting your money. By the way, you should really subscribe to this channel. Join my private skincare app and visit my website with all my previous videos on it. All the information for this video is linked below in the description and in the first pinned comment. I've also included a link to all of my Amazon live skincare videos. I have hundreds. And you can catch me weekly on Amazon going live. I am an Amazon affiliate and I always appreciate when you use my link. So thank you so much. All right, now let's get into skin. First, anything that is claiming to tighten your skin is doing that through collagen induction therapy, meaning there is a stimulus or some kind of trigger that is causing your skin to repair itself. The first time I ever heard collagen induction therapy was actually when I was learning to microneedle and really like diving in and getting to know it. And that's where I would see CIT or collagen induction therapy all the time. But the truth is collagen induction therapy is created by anything that creates a stimulus or a controlled wound in the skin, not just microneedling. However, you see it used now synonymously with microneedling, which I believe is a disservice to all of us consumers because you think collagen induction and now we're starting to think microneedling, but so many devices improve your skin via collagen induction. If you've been with me for a while, then you know as we get older, our skin cells just slow down. When we're first born, they are rapidly repairing themselves and pushing up to new ones and sloughing off old ones. But as we get older, that slows way down and we're not turning over the skin cells like we used to. And that is what makes our skin look dull, old, uh, just not the same as it was when we were littler. Our skin also looks tired because the production of collagen and elastin slows. We want to trigger more collagen and elastin to build in our skin and that is going to give us firmer, tighter skin and that is exactly what collagen induction therapy is. How do we trigger our skin to produce more collagen? We have two layers of skin that we talk a lot about. We have the epidermis which is on the top and we have the dermis which is down below. The epidermis is just really, really thin. Basically, it's our skin barrier. It's just protecting our dermis where we have collagen fibers and elastin and blood vessels and everything kind of like giving us structure and trying to support this volume of skin. When you remove the epidermis, that causes collagen induction. When I do an acid peel that removes the epidermis, that is triggering collagen induction, which is going to firm up and boost the collagen in my dermis. Not every device is triggering collagen induction. However, most devices, if not all, will claim that they tighten the skin. I've broken our devices into skin tightening versus skin toning. Skin tightening devices are things like microneedling, microdermabrasion, acid peels actives, although I know that those are not devices. I threw it in there because it's one of my favorite things to do and that does stimulate collagen induction. Dermaplaning, ablative lasers like the Plumera and the Plumon, and non-ablative lasers like the Nera, Radio Frequency, and Haifu. For skin toning, we have intense pulse light, which is IPL, high frequency, microcurrent, and LED. 
In this section, I'm going over devices that cause collagen induction and also or can cause exfoliation. This section will include microneedling, acids, microdermabrasion, and dermaplaning. It all started back in the day with my first Dr. Pen A1. Microneedling with a roller or a doctor pen like this will create micro channels or tears in your skin and that is going to induce collagen. It's just a stabbing motion that actually pricks down into the dermis. Now with rollers and even setting your doctor pen at a low depth, you don't necessarily go into the dermis, but the goal for collagen induction therapy is to hit the dermis because that's where collagen and elastin live. I've used so many microneedling devices and pens and rollers. I really do love them. I find that Dr. Pen makes a really good, reliable pen. I've had almost, I think, every one of their models. And then I also love my Aluma pen, which is a more professional microneedling pen. The microneedling pen is a simple device. Essentially, it is just a cartridge that goes into the pen. You can adjust the depth and the speed of it and it is going to stab little pins into your skin and these cartridges that hold these pins are disposable every time which I love because you don't have to worry about sanitizing them or getting any infection from them. They not only cause that trauma so now your skin is like I need to repair itself but you use serums and biostimulators for instance to pack into your skin so you're able to get peptides and things into your skin like vitamins that are going to help boost also and support that collagen and elastin that you want to regrow. Many questions I get are which cartridge to use. If you want to true up a scar or help soften it, then you're going to want to use pin cartridges that are lower on the scale, like 9 and 12 pin. If you just want overall skin rejuvenation, you can do 16. I use 16 a lot just because that's what I had on hand, but usually going higher, like to 36, is a great way to just get an overall infusion and get the trauma you're looking for. Microneedling is a way of exfoliation. So what I mean by that is when you're stabbing through all these layers of skin, you are breaking up all of those skin cells, right? And so some of their edges will dry off and just want to flake off. And so sometimes depending on how deep you microneedle, like if I microneedle at a one millimeter in depth, then over the next three days, my skin will feel more like sandpaper until those dead skin cells that are trying to flake off actually dissolve off. If I microneedle below a 0.5, this will not happen. Usually it's just over a one or close to a one that that causes a knee, but everyone's skin is different. So you might get that drying feeling at a lower or higher level than me. And that is not a bad thing to exfoliate after microneedling. It's just, what are you trying to achieve? For instance, if I was doing B BB glow, I would not microneedle super deep because I wouldn't want to exfoliate out my BB glow. So that's the reason with BB glow, you're down at 0.15, 0.25 millimeters just because you don't want your skin lifting off. You just want to infuse that vegetable pigment and serum into your skin. When you get a microdermabrasion or you give yourself a microdermabrasion, that is typically removing the top dermis layer. And that's the reason a lot of people will talk about microdermabrasion, helping with fine lines. It can right? Because it's removing that top layer of skin that will look dull and would crease easier. It's also allowing penetration of product better. So hopefully that means those new skin cells down below are going to look more hydrated and full and plump, which is going to make your skin look just so much nicer. And again, it's removed that top layer. So now the dermis is going to try to push up. Microdermabrasion has a tip that has a diamond fitting on it. So it's really aggressive and then it sucks. And so as it's drug over your skin, it's helping break off skin cells, but then it's sucking them in. And that's how microdermabrasion works. I have a few at-home models that I've tried. Nothing has been by far my favorite. And this protocol in general is not something I actually really enjoy or think is that great for most people's skins. If you are fair like me and you have thin skin, especially as you're getting older, then probably causing something on your face to suck and pull at your skin is not ideal. I have given myself bruises with this. My husband has given himself bruises with playing with it. And so I just wanna make sure that you know 
that there are so many other ways to exfoliate your skin and trigger collagen induction without doing microdermabrasion. I do have them. I will probably use them again in the future. I do actually like taking the diamond tip around my nose right in this area. Microdermabrasion is just better for more youthful, young skin. People who have a lot of like big pores and like thick skin, they're great candidates for microdermabrasion. For my skin type, I don't actually love it because I think that I can exfoliate my skin in other ways and not subject myself to the suction and potential breakage of capillaries and just bruising. Acid is one of my favorite ways to turn over my skin, encourage collagen induction, and just have a really beautiful, tight, clean canvas to work with. And then Nightly Retin-A is just that tried and true, scientifically proven ingredient topical that will constantly improve your skin because it wants to turn over skin cells every day. And so you can use it as a topical daily and you will get flaking, but eventually you will get used to it and your skin will just look nicer all the time because it's speeding up the process of cellular turnover. And then we have dermaplaning. I dermaplane almost every month. If you go to my Amazon Lives, you will always see that usually once a month I am dermaplaning my skin. I like to dermaplane my skin before I do acid peels because I find more consistent of uh, skin as far as like dead skin cells and not. But then also I don't have any hair follicles kind of like preventing good acid absorption. So I really like to dermaplane right before I do an acid peel, like a day or two. Especially if you're super sensitive, give yourself a couple days before just to ensure that your skin has a time to like heal. Don't dermaplane your face and then immediately throw acid on. That will really hurt. Let me know below in the comments if you are a fan of any of these protocols, like microneedling is your thing, microdermabrasion is your thing, or you're ready to try something. I also wrote a blog post. So all of this like detailed information is going to be in a written format so you can read it and reference. <laughs> Let's talk about lasers. There's ablative and non-ablative lasers. Ablative lasers mean that they're just like burning the top surface of your skin to encourage collagen induction, like the Plumon or the Plumere. Whereas non-ablative lasers are like radio frequency and the Nera, where they're able to cause trauma to the dermis without actually burning or hurting the top layer of skin. So both of these types of lasers work via collagen induction. Again, that's how all of this stuff works. And the ablative laser is going to be more geared towards somebody who's probably had a lot of acne scars and they have like a lot of surface texture. That is gonna be the person who probably will go to the doctor's office and get a intense CO2 laser done where it basically just burns off the entire sheet of the top of your skin to help remodel that collagen because a lot of times with acne scars or scars in general you have fibrous tissues that kind of get weird in the skin and not orderly and that's what causes the texture you see and so the goal is always to remodel that collagen into nice formatted strings so that not only does your skin look tighter but it's smooth <laughs> If you reference my plasma fibroblasting videos, you'll see that I do burn myself with that type of laser, an ablative laser that's actually singeing the outside of my skin to trigger tightening. But it has downtime and it's not meant for everyone's skin. You really need to be pretty fair to be able to use an ablative laser like that and really you should be skin type one through three. It's been two years since I first had plasma fibroblasting done. I had it done by a professional originally and then after that I bought the pen myself and continued doing it every six months and I have seen that my upper eyes in particular have really firmed up so much more. I used to just have them like hanging in here and like I would try to put in eyeshadow and it would just be like weird and now it's so much tighter and so when I do makeup tutorials I feel so much better about it. Our non-ablative laser. So the first one is the Nera. And I've been using the Nera now for like 18 months and it is really powerful. It is FDA cleared and it brings into your own home the same laser technology that is being used in dermatologist offices. And because I don't have all the details off the top of my head, I wrote about it. So let's dig in and really understand what's going on here. 
And just a heads up, the scientist who owns Nera and created Nera was also one of the original scientists. And I believe he still has a company today that manufactures the semiconductors and the diodes for these lasers for the actual very expensive machines that are in dermatologist offices. So he decided that he could take that same technology and by tuning it down just a smidge, he could get us an at-home laser that would be safe enough for the home user. For instance, in the dermatologist's office, they're using a laser that does 1,550 nanometers in strength. The Nira is tuned down to 1,450 nanometers. Apparently this strength allows for peak absorption without actually then triggering the pain response of the skin. The reason the Nira is effective for at-home skin tightening just like in a dermatologist's office is basically this. You can go to a dermatologist's office and their in-office laser will do the same impact in one treatment that a month's use of the Nira would do. You're going to get the skin tightening in one session of an in-office laser versus you can do the Nira for far less but you just treat your eye two minutes every day and that gives you actually more impact in a month than that single treatment that you got in the dermatologist's office. How it works is it just shoots a beam of heat light, I guess, somehow, into your dermis. So you don't feel it necessarily on the top, you feel it down. Now, if you've been like me and you've accidentally double shot yourself, you feel it at the top, but that is more of an issue of the light beams kind of like layering on each other rather than just the initial blast. The way it's supposed to work is it's supposed to send down this intense heat super fast, less than a second, so that it doesn't burn your skin and it gets the dermis up to the heat that it's supposed to hit. And then immediately it turns off and then you move it to the next incremental section. And basically that's how you true up your eyes one little micro burst at a time every morning for two minutes. I know people who use this thing all over their face because essentially they're giving themselves a non-ablative, non-fractional laser experience at home. And as long as they have the time, the Nira is powerful and the battery lasts forever. So you could just like keep shooting it everywhere. And again, the collagen induction is being triggered by the heat. <laughs> Radio frequency is our next non-ablative laser. I've got a bunch of radio frequency devices. This isn't even all of them. I feel like the reason you're watching this video is because you're like me. You go online, you're looking at all of these different things. They're all kind of claiming the same thing. And you're like, well, why is one like $500? Another one's like $50? Like, is it the same? Like, what's the difference? And a lot of these sites just don't do a good job of helping the consumer really identify how these devices compare and which one would be the best for them. And I don't know if that's purposeful or if it's just they're still trying to figure it out. I'm not really sure because as a person who buys and uses all these things and tries to give good information on them, I sometimes feel like, uh, I don't know. So for instance, with radio frequency, the biggest thing that's been difficult for me to ever ascertain from any of these other ones I've ever had is, is it getting my skin to the right temperature and how long is it doing it for? And what I mean by that is for radio frequency to really take place in your skin, your skin needs to reach 115 degrees and it needs to be at that heat for about three minutes. And you need to do it quite frequently in order to encourage that collagen to keep building. Well, I have no idea what this temperature or this device gets up to. It doesn't say, and am I supposed to have a thermometer and how accurate is that gonna be? Same with this one, same with this one. They all claim to heat up the skin to encourage collagen, but how would they ever do that when they don't even tell me the temperature they're getting to, how long I'm supposed to keep my skin at that temperature? It just doesn't make any sense. Then I got my Tripolar Stop X. Now this isn't even their highest end model. I got this on sale during October's like Christmas sale or something. And I have been blown away by it. The thing that I like about it initially, because I haven't been blown away by any results yet. I have no idea. I just got it. I've used it like four times. But what I will say about it is that this device was created with the home user in mind because it has a sensor on it. It has like a light that goes orange when you hit the correct temperature of 115 degrees in your skin, and then you maintain that for three to five minutes in that area. So like if you're doing your cheek, you just slowly maintain it, keeping that orange light on, and now you know you've gotten the correct heat for the correct amount of time. Brilliant. Okay, here is my 
massive haifu machine. Like this is like a pretty legit one for at home use. Another wavelength that's able to get into your dermis without hurting the top layer of your skin is ultrasound. Now, ultrasound has been used for a very, very long time. And at some point they decided that they could use ultrasound to basically create trauma at different levels in your skin. When it comes to the Haifu machine or old therapy, the way it works is you have different cartridges that have different depths. So for instance, you could use different depths around different areas of your body or on your face. And the thing with Haifu is what it does is instead of heating up an entire area of skin, it's more like a microneedling device in the fact that it drills down columns into your skin and the heat actually coagulates those columns. It basically causes the skin that's surrounding the columns to want to fix it and it should help then align collagen and elastin and make it nice and clean, which is supposed to make your skin tighter and plumper and boosted. It hurts. Anyone who tells you that HIFI doesn't hurt or old therapy doesn't hurt or any type of ultrasound technology for tightening your skin doesn't hurt, I don't know. For me, it is really painful. And in fact, I won't do it on my face anymore because I felt like at some point it was like drilling into my brain. I just didn't feel comfortable anymore. I remember the feeling of this, but maybe mine won't be as intense as hers. I don't know. It came with this gel and then I just put it on the front of it. I'm gonna try to do this area first. That is my plan. I'm gonna push start. The trigger button is here. Come on, do it. And I'm just like a little scared. I can see from underneath that I'm lined up. Okay, I'm gonna push it. Okay. You can see on the screen that it's going through all the dots. Oh, this kind of hurts. I guess like some people move down as it's doing it. I don't know if I'm supposed to be moving down or not. Um, I don't like it. Okay, we're gonna turn down the power. We're gonna go to point three and see how that feels. Um, but what ends up happening is you can boo it on your body, which I feel more comfortable with. I need to get it out and tighten my stomach and that's my goal for the new year. And one of the ways I would layer this in with, for instance, tightening my stomach is there's three things that I feel like I could do together in a sequence to help tighten my stomach. So I would do Haifu to go in and not only break up any fat because it can also drill through fat, also obviously tighten the skin, but then I'm going to do um, a plumier. So I'm gonna do ablative on my stomach after that. And then once that's done, I will do an acid peel to clear it all and make sure that now all of my skin has gotten tightness. Basically, it's gonna be getting the columns down in the dermis. It will then also get the top part singed and also tighten. And then when the acid peel comes through, it will wipe it all clean, making sure that every portion of skin surface Surface is the same color. This thing's a joke. The white one's not good either. I have three of these minis. None of them are good. One last thing about Haifu, where you will notice it most or feel it most is when they are doing the top layers because at the top surface of your skin, you have the most nerve endings. But then when you get to like three and four millimeters or five millimeters down, you don't feel anything. So it really is those top layers where you feel the drilling. And then after that, it just kind of feels like a weird numbing. And sometimes that has to do with it hitting a nerve. That's the other issue with Haifu is it will kind of drill into nerves, which is the weirdest, grossest experience. All right, so that kind of completes our whole section of devices that actually skin tighten, that actually induce some kind of trauma to get your skin to proliferate. Now it's all about skin toning devices. The reason I decided to break it up in these two different subcategories of skin tightening versus skin toning is because I will get questions on a regular basis like this. Kim, I love your videos, 
Should I get a microneedling pen or should I get a high frequency wand? These things do completely different things. And so it's very difficult for me to tell you which one to get because they're both great. And if you buy one, it's not like one is doing what the other one does. And so this is my reason for not only making this video, but also the way I organized it so that you would understand, okay, these things do collagen induction therapy, these things do skin toning, and then eventually we'll get to the things that I would buy again. So a skin toning device, the IPL. Now they will say that this also triggers collagen induction and maybe really high end ones at a spa do. But for me overall, IPL is more about tone than it is about actually boosting collagen. And an at home IPL is for me mostly about hair removal more than it breaking up pigment. Although my Bocidin has been effective at breaking up pigment and I'm doing a little study right now during my Amazon Lives where we, we only treat this arm and I'm not treating this arm. So hopefully in a couple months we'll be like, wow, that arm is a lot wider. Or it's not, and I'll we'll be like, okay, it didn't break up any pigment. But the reason I thought to do it was because it has done such a good job on killing nearly, I would say 75% of my hair. On one of my thighs, I have a mole, and I noticed that mole was starting to get grayer, and now I'm realizing, oh, it's the IPL. Because if you wanna save your moles and not lose them during an IPL treatment, you need to take like a waxy white crown and mark it out so that the intense pulse light can't break up that melanin. My point, being is when I saw that I was like wow maybe this is effective at melanin so then that's the reason we've been treating my arm. So with the IPL you can treat for hair if you have hair. For instance if you have red gray or blonde hair it's not going to work for you because there's not any pigment really in gray hair and then red and blonde hair don't have enough pigment I guess for it to pick up plus those are typically on very fair skin as well and so there's just not a huge variance in shade for the intense light to be able to focus in on the pigment and break it up. You need fair skin and dark hair follicles to be able to have these kinds of devices be effective at home or even in the office like you just that's how they work they target melanin so if you don't have any melanin it's not going to do anything also if you have too much melanin it's also not for you you cannot be dark and use this number one you wouldn't want to break up your melanin because i'm sure it's beautiful number two with your hair, if you're trying to do hair removal and you have like really dark skin and really dark hair, then again, it's not going to be able to see the difference. It's not gonna target the melanin. So you really just need to have fair skin with dark hair. Once your dark hair goes gray, it's not gonna work anymore. So you've gotta do it before you gray out. If you've ever heard of the term photofacial, that's what the IPL is being referenced or the photofacial is utilizing the IPL. So the other devices we've covered so far send out one wavelength, but with an IPL, it's sending out lots of different wavelengths of pulsed light. I've used two at-home IPL devices, first my Faustina and now my Bosidin. I've been really happy with my Bosidin because I like how its head swivels. I also like that this is set on cold so that it gives you a nice cold, almost like an ice box feeling on your arm before it blasts. And then on the back side, it has all the different things you want to do, like hair removal or face or bikini. And you just toggle it there. Whereas my other one, I would have to change lamps based on what it was doing. So I've just found this to be just an easier to use device. And with it, I've shed a lot of hair. So I'm grateful. My high frequency wand. I have three of these. I believe three or four now. And I just love them. I love the sensation. So if you like kind of that, like, um, how do you explain it? It's kind of like, it's like a light skin surge of electricity. Like it's kind of just like vibrating on your skin and almost feels like on the verge of a tickle. I like it and I love using it in my hair. So this is how high frequency works. It was first developed over 120 years ago by Nikola Tesla. So if you can't afford a Tesla, well, 
Maybe you can in another format. And these were super popular at the turn of the century because what ended up happening, and I'm not sure if they knew this at the time or it was just a byproduct so everybody was using it. When this has the electricity running through the argon or the neon, it doesn't seem to matter, but they use noble gases inside of these probes and that's what helps the current travel. And then it travels to the end of it. And then you put it to your skin and it will connect and that's where you get the sensation. Well, in between your skin and this, there can be ozone made and that ozone helps kill P bacteria that's found in acne. A lot of people like using this for treating acne to help it go down, but at the turn of the century, people were using it to treat strep because strep was a bacterial infection and they didn't have penicillin yet. And so they would use these to treat the bacterial infections that they got. This is something that is very superficial. So for instance, I use it to stimulate in my hair because I want to help my hair grow better. So every couple of days, I will run this through my hair. I usually do it on Amazon Live and I usually do those three times a week. And I'll just like for five to 10 minutes, depending on how much I get sidetracked, I'll just be combing through my hair, zapping my scalp. It feels so good. And what it's doing is it's stimulating the blood circulation around the hair follicle. So that hair follicle is getting more nutrition as it's developing, which means as my hair grows, it's going to be a stronger shaft, which means less breakage. There are benefits for acne. There's also benefits just for stimulating your skin. Now, if you have things like rosacea, be careful. Um, anytime you're putting heat on your skin and you have rosacea, you could trigger that more. You can use this to push in product. You can do water-based serums and you can use it to push it in. I've also found it really nice to put on a sheet mask that's water-based and run it around it too. So there's a lot of good uses for this. It is definitely like a device that only you need one of in a house because you can treat basically your whole family with it. And I just, I don't know, I, I love these devices. I think they're great. However, these are not going to help with anti-aging besides the fact of maybe being able to push in serum deeper or also being able to help your hair grow in thicker and maintain longer hair as we get older. These kits usually include a few of these probes, like this mushroom size one, one that has like a little tip or like if you wanted to get on specifically on little acne heads, then the comb. Our next device concept is microcurrent. I have bought so many different microcurrents. In fact, I have bought this MyoLift twice. I bought it originally when I did the probes, which I was like not a fan, and then I got rid of it. We are going to work on this thing here, and I'm gonna push run, whatever that means. And then I'm going to, gosh, this is confusing. I really think I need these to be more apart. I don't know. Okay, here we go. So she has it underneath the person's eye. I'm like afraid to stick it on my face. Okay. Okay. Now, when I put this next one on my skin, it's going to complete the um, current circuit, I guess. So I'm a little freaked out, but here we go. And then I bought it again when they came out with the gloves when I thought, oh, okay, now maybe I can do it. Wasn't into that really. Then they came out with like masks and like things that you could lock onto your face. I was like, okay, maybe I can do it. I just have never gotten into microcurrent. The way microcurrent works is that it sends in a current of electricity and you're not supposed to feel it. Okay, if you feel it, then you're exhausting it. And what I mean by that is it's supposed to be causing inside your cells, inside the mitochondria to create ATP, which is energy. That energy is supposed to stay in the muscle so that the muscle is bigger and more plump. But if you're twitching because you feel it, then that's actually expending ATP. So it's always been this really difficult thing because I'm like, okay, I can't feel it. Is it working? How do I know? Because if I can feel it, then I'm not actually getting the benefits. Besides that, it just takes a long time to do and you've got to do it all the time, which is why microcurrent has never been my tried and true, but I know so many, so many people love it. So I don't want to like hate on it just because I never take the time or I've never been consistent with it because I have been consistent and taking the time with other things that have just like made more sense to me or just been the thing that I liked doing. I got this Foro mini bear one. I thought this was interesting because it had the two prongs here. And so I was like, okay, that could make sense. And this is like so small that sometimes I'll take it on a plane and just like massage my face with it. But I don't really know if it's doing any microcurrent.
And then I also got a new face. And again, this one works really similar to the Foro. And this one has like some more buttons on it so you can control from it, like the intensity. I don't know, like I can feel it a little bit. And then I think, well, I can feel it. So does that mean it's not doing it? Slowly glide towards the back of the neck. Take a step up. And then right underneath that jawline, really contouring that jawline, taking a step up, slowly glide towards the middle of the ear. And then one more, skirting that orbital rim. You're gonna start at the thick of the brow and lift up the arch of the brow and then the end of the brow, always lifting towards the hairline. Look at the pop of my cheekbone compared to here. Look at the corner of my lip compared to here. In the end, I've just never been passionate about microcurrent. You will see people do those before and afters where they'll like plump up one cheek and then this side's not. Keep in mind that that does not last. That plump goes away, just like if you go to the gym and you pump up your muscles because you're working out really hard and your muscle fibers are swelling. Well, later on, you're not gonna be as ripped. It's the same with your cheek. They do say that it's cumulative, meaning that impact patch will last longer and longer the more you do it, which I'm not saying isn't true, just like building up muscles in the gym they're gonna start to get bigger and bigger the more you do it. It's just, I've never been good at doing it. So let me know if you're a fan of microcurrent and how you got into it and how you maintain consistency. I'd love to know. Next up is red light therapy. I just put on my Omnilux chest and neck LED mask. I love this thing. I just think it is so easy to use. Like I will just stick this in my pocket and it, oh, well, I don't turn it off and I'll be able to sit here. I will run this multiple times a day when I think about it, when I'm working at my computer. In fact, check it out, you guys. As I am editing this video right now, I have got it on. Because it's awesome. So let's talk about red light therapy and the benefits of it for your skin and why I like incorporating it into my skincare regimen. LED stands for light emitting diodes and it was first used for like skin and wellness by the Navy SEALs in the 1990s. They were using it to help guys recover from wounds and injuries. They found that a wavelength of visible to infrared light, basically 650 nanometers to 850 nanometers was the right length of light that would actually penetrate into the skin and be absorbed by your mitochondria inside your cells. And the reason that this is important is because what mitochondria do is they absorb that light and they make ATP and ATP is energy for ourselves. But more than that, it helps fix those cells. So as we age, besides our cells not turning over as fast, the reason they're not turning over as fast is because our mitochondria, basically like the little and animals inside our cells that make everything function based on their ability to make ATP, they start to die. They start to get like weird and not functioning properly. And so they slow down and turn our cells slow down and we just start to look older. So if we can get our mitochondria to be working at their top level, then what that does is that encourages them to not only make more ATP, also get oxygen and nutrition to everything that it needs to do, but it also helps it make more collagen. It also reduces inflammation because when mitochondria are working properly, the inflammation goes down. All right, I thought that this was really interesting. For those of you who suffer from rosacea, I know that it has to be such a difficult situation. As fairer people, we take on a higher percentage of the rosacea cases. I think it's just part of us having the skin type we do. We also have a higher tendency towards rosacea. And so as I was digging in trying to understand, well, how does red light actually work and what's the point of it in our skincare routines, I came across this site and you guys, if you want to know about red light information, you need to go here. I don't know them. I just found them today, but it's called, what is it called? Red Light Man. Okay, go to that website because he has so much information on red light and how it works. He says for rosacea, the key takeaway is that light therapy is going to reduce inflammation and redness in the area and also resolve the problem of low oxygen consumption, which caused blood vessel growth and fibroblast growth. Mitochondria cannot use oxygen properly when they are damaged. The inability to use oxygen increases blood flow to tissue. Mitochondria produce lactic acid when they 
can't get and use oxygen, which leads to immediate vasodilation and the growth of fibroblasts. If this problem is prolonged over a period of time, new blood vessels start to grow. I didn't realize that the reason our blood vessels create new ones is because the mitochondria aren't helping them resolve oxygen fast enough. And so then they branch out and create more vessels so that they can get the oxygen consumption corrected. Isn't that crazy? I had no idea. It reminded me of Jurassic Park. Yes, I have four boys. When Jeff Goldblum says life finds a way, it's true. It's like the blood was like, okay, well, this area isn't seeming to like fill our needs. So we're just going to like do this and get our needs resolved. I think that's probably what a lot of things do in our bodies and in life. It's just they create workarounds. Unfortunately, those workarounds aren't the most attractive and aren't desirous for us. And so one of the things red light can do for people who suffer from rosacea is by going in and triggering those mitochondria inside your cell to function better, they're going to then improve that entire situation so that your blood vessels don't keep breaking off, creating new little ventricles. So if you're a person who suffers from rosacea, red light could be your thing. I don't know if you've tried it yet or not. Essentially, red light man is saying that your mitochondria are the root problem of your rosacea. And if you can trigger your mitochondria by using red light to go in improve their quality so that they start working better, it should result in less redness for you. So regarding red light, I have lots of different devices. I mean, light stim is supposed to be an amazing light, but the problem is I don't wanna hold it there. And so I never use it. I like things that are hands-free. I love um, my Omnilux face mask and my current body one. They're both, in my opinion, the same. And it's battery operated again, flexi. So for instance, if you have serums on your face and you stick your face against it, you can easily wipe it off. This is a thing to keep in mind. When it comes to LED lights, the closer you are, the better. The further you go away, it really cuts down on its impact into your skin and into those mitochondria. So getting up against it is what you want and being able to have a serum on your face that you can easily wipe off of this is, I think, amazing. How I use my devices. Okay, I think that this section might be really interesting too because it's about how I put the things together and I'm gonna use a example of what just has been going on. So on November 1st, I plasma fibroblasted around my eyes and my mouth and that video can be seen two videos ago, I'll link to it. And then two weeks after, I microneedled my face very lightly and you can actually watch that because it was last week's video. So both of those will be linked. And then tomorrow I will be doing my TCA peel. So on December 1st, I will be doing a TCA peel and I'm probably doing 30%. I'm not 100% sure, but I'll be filming it and sharing it with you. I wanted to share with you that I had done the ablative. Then I had done a little infusion two weeks later with microneedling. I didn't go super deep. I didn't flake or exfoliate from that. It was just to get a bunch of different serums into my skin. And then two weeks later, I'm going to do the full peel. And how that's going to help me is any little red marks or hyperpigmentation that I may have gotten from the plasma ablative laser, I will be able to clear that all off with one acid peel. Those red marks would fade themselves because of my skin tone, because I I want to do a TCA peel anyways, because one of the reasons I love doing a TCA peel is that I just feel like all of my pores get cleaned out and tightened all at the same time, which isn't necessarily happening with plasma fibroblasting or even a light microneedling. So by being able to do the TCA peel after those two things, really I feel like is gonna give me such a beautiful canvas. During this month, I also used my high frequency 13 times during my Amazon Lives during the month. I used my IPL nine times on my arm and I actually did underarms one day too. So I did do some hair treatment there. And after microneedling and plasma fibroblasting, I did use my LED mask to help with just encouraging the collagen to heal and the mitochondria to work faster. I created some layering guides also. Now all this stuff again is in the blog, but let me go over them really quick to help you understand what I'm talking about. And there are a million other ways, like just be creative now that you understand what the different things do. You can figure out like for yourself, oh, I need this thing and this thing, 
And then these are the ways I can couple it together. But I'll give you some heads up on some ideas that I have and how I've done it. So for hair growth, you can microneedle your scalp two times per month, and then you can use your high frequency wand following the stimulation to help drive like any serums or stem cells that you're using into your scalp more. And then throughout the month when you're not doing the two microneedlings, just like three times a week, you would just still be combing your hair back through with the high frequency wand. Here's an overall skin firming idea. Radio frequency is heating up the skin. So one thing that you can do is you can warm up your skin before microneedling. So go in with your high frequency wand and like, let's say you wanna focus on all of the lines like on the side of your face, and neck, let's say. So you're like really heating all of that tissue up, getting it really heated, and then you're going to microneedle. Not only have the skin being heated, but now you're going to stab into it as well to help grow collagen and straighten up and encourage that elastin to grow as well. And then once that's done, you're gonna pop on your red light mask. For eye wrinkles, obviously I do the ablative laser twice a year. So I use my Plumier or Plumon. They're both equal in my mind. Twice a year. I basically burn those holes, those dots everywhere, singeing the outside of my skin. Then I'm going to use my red light to help heal it. And then once this is all healed up about two weeks, then I'll go back to using my Nira every day all around my eyes. <laughs> If you wanted plumped up cheeks, you could always take your radio frequency and warm up your cheeks, getting them really plumped up with blood and circulation. And then you could go in and do a microcurrent experience where you're just like, again, working that muscle and filling it up with ATP so they're big and juicy. To improve your skin tone, you could dermaplane your face. So you're gonna shave off the hair and like the top micron of skin. And then a day or two later, you should give yourself at least a day after dermaplaning before you do it, you'll do an acid peel. Depending on your skin, you'll have to decide on what acid you're going to use. And then after that, you will do LED light. So that'll help really even out your skin tone. And for me, I always give my skin two weeks at least between procedures. On the blog post, I wrote it out by skin concern as well, but I don't wanna like be so verbose and go through it all. So if you wanna go check that out, please do. I also wanted to give you guys insight on how effective I think the devices are for different concepts. So for skin circulation, I think LED light works, high frequency wand works, and so does microcurrent because you're basically moving and circulating your skin and causing the skin to be stimulated. For product penetration, I like microneedling, Retin-A, microdermabrasion, if your skin can tolerate it, and acids. For wrinkles and sagging skin, I like microneedling, I like Retin-A, I like acid peels. Radio frequency can help, although I haven't been a huge radio frequency user, so I don't wanna tell you I've seen a huge change in it, but I am excited about my new one that I just got from Tripolar. And then ablative lasers. Those are going to make the biggest impact because they are creating so much trauma that your skin's like, oh my gosh, we have to repair itself like now. In the end, the devices you pick are up to you because a lot of them are doing the same things. It's just how fast are they doing those things or what's the cost for them doing those things? How long or how often do you have to use it to get the benefit of those things they're claiming? So for instance, if you're kind of like me and you like microneedling and you don't really care for radio frequency, well then just microneedle because radio frequency is also trying to trigger collagen induction down at the dermis, but you're getting that triggered with microneedling. So you don't need to do both. I mean, if you want to, you can, but you could just stick to the one that you like the best. Or maybe for instance, microneedling is so traumatic for you in your mind, like stabbing your skin, pricking it, like who does that? Well, then maybe radio frequency is your device because you feel more comfortable with that and it's also really relaxing. Or for instance, if you don't have time for radio frequency because you feel like moving it around takes so long, well then get the Nira because the Nira is gonna blast that heat into your dermis super fast. If you wanna fade sunspots or freckles, then you could always use the IPL and, and break up the pigment that way. For me, what I found to be the fastest at breaking up pigment and basically giving me consistent skin tone is a TCA peel with Retin-A and good sunscreen.
When it comes to LED devices, just make sure that number one, it's at the right price point for you. Do not overspend. Number two, get one that's battery operated and get one that is easy to wear, that's not too heavy. A lot of those original plastic ones were so heavy that you couldn't do anything else. Now, my recommendation, if you really wanna get the benefits of red light therapy, specifically on your face, is you need to get a silicone battery operated LED mask. You can get the Omnilux, which I have a code for. You can get the current body, which I think also we have a code or a deal for maybe. Those ones are great. And I really like using them because you just put them on, click it, put it in your pocket, and you can do a lot of other things while utilizing LED light for your face. Big side note, if you have an electric implant, some kind of device in your body, like a pacemaker, you are not a candidate for microcurrent, high frequency, or radio frequency. Those devices can, I guess, mess with your implant, and that would be the last thing you would want to have happen. So therefore, microneedling and acid peels, and probably LED light is fine, are gonna be your things. Now as we wrap this up, what are the things that I would buy again? I have six items, six things that are my tried and true. First, what do you guys think? Microneedling, you're right. Two, my Nera, it's non-ablative. Three, my plasma pen that is ablative. Four, my high frequency because it's been so great at helping my hair. Five, my LED silicone mask for both my neck and my face because they're so useful. And I like my Bowside and IPL, not necessarily for pigment breaking up of skin, but specifically for the hair removal because it has gotten rid of 75% of my hair and I'm ready to get back at consistency and see if I can get it to like 90%. Because I rarely use my large high food device, I've only used it twice and I had it done professionally once. So I don't know if I can really speak to if it's worth it or not, or if I would buy it again. I didn't want to make any claims about it. I don't know if it's effective or not. It's pretty scary. It's an intense device. I am planning in the new year to do that whole stomach experience. So make sure you're subscribed so that you can check that out and catch it when it releases. So my top six devices coupled with a really good sunscreen and Retin-A and acid peels are what has transformed my skin, I believe. And most importantly, the things that have transformed my skin is microneedling and TCA peels. The other things I have enjoyed using and I think have coupled into my procedures and have made impacts, but nothing has impacted me the way microneedling and TCA has. And that is because I have the right skin tone for it, number one, and that's because I've been consistent for a long time kind of doing this model. If you wanna check out what my skin used to look like about three years ago when I started sharing what I was doing, then you can go to my website and watch a ton of videos of what has happened over the last few years. In my opinion, my skin tone is so much more even. Now in this, right now, I am wearing makeup, but don't worry, I'm gonna wash my face and insert right now a picture of what I am looking like so that that you can see real skin and not just like glossed over skin. My pores have tightened over the time that I've been doing this and that has aided into my skin being so much smoother. My neck is still a work in progress, so make sure to join me for this journey as we try to true up my neck week by week. I hope our deep dive into all the devices I have and my thoughts on all of them helped you out today. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next video. What are they really doing? Funny how the story goes, little hope of bigger dreams. Uh, they try to bring the sucker down, singing louder than the crowd. Collagen firms up our skin.